Uh, I just hooked up to my trailer, so the truck is done. And just wanted to wanted to read you guys from the from the bill. Now here's the amount at the bottom of it. If you can see where my uh, where my finger is, three zero nine five point six three. So three thousand ninety five dollars and sixty three cents U.S. That's over four grand Canadian. But a buddy of mine was just telling me that this happened to his friend uh, with a Volvo because you know all these trucks are the same. Volvo Mac. Uh, I'm not offended anymore when somebody says that it's a rebranded Mac. You know, all the dealers at the top it says Mac, at the bottom it says Volvo, and then it says Hino, which is Toyota, and they also sell uh, tow trucks, like big tow trucks. At one point I was thinking about that, you know, like changing my international, getting that attachment, but that one was like 20,000 bucks. And the wheelbase, my wheelbase was too short, 236 inches. And you need a long wheelbase to, you know, to tow heavy stuff. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, he says that this guy Russian guy from New York, he says, happens to his body, and also he was quoted 1500 bucks uh, US, of course, for this pump, def pump, very expensive, and he was able to find it. He says they charge you, uh, it's not the real price, it's because you want it, like they assume you want it ASAP, right? But well, in my, in my case, it was true because I, I don't want to lose the load, at least I'm getting a, a load that pays well, and I'll pretty much make up, make back make back the money I just spent here uh, with this next load, you know? So, the key thing is to keep moving. And that's why we pay so much money, it's just uh, the truck cannot sit, the truck has to move. Anyway, let, let's look at this two-page novel over here. Uh, issued by, uh, now, can you guess how you pronounce this name? I had no clue, so I asked them. And the lady says, McMahon. McMahon Truck Center, but actually it's called Columbus Truck Center. And I said, why is it spelled like that? Why can you spell it M-C-M-A-N-N, -N, McMahon? And she says, I have no idea. And the technician wrote, uh, complaint was going into D-rate, C-E-L, check engine light is on. Okay. Pulled truck to north door, hooked up computer, and printed codes. Has low voltage and open circuit codes for the DEF pump. Checked battery connections all tight. Started going over harness, pulled connector off DEF pump, found DEF fluid in bottom of connector. Looks a hole in the back of the connector on pump side due to contamination. Will need harness as well. Needs a DEF pump and SCR harness. Uh, part two, replace DEF pump, pump unit, core charge, 568, uh, do, 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 do. hose, $35, do, 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 do. Total line is $2,121 at this point. Uh, drained coolant, then started to remove lines from pump, from DEF pump. Had trouble getting them off. Had Joel, thank you Joel, had Joel help remove line. You know, they, they never use uh, articles, VA, just for, to keep it short. So he had trouble removing the line from the old uh, DEF pump. And basically, I guess they, they destroyed it and had to get new short coolant line. Coolant line. Found sales truck with same coolant line on truck. Pulled off of chassis M085995. So they, they couldn't get the part in time because the guy told me this morning that 
the night guy who ordered the part and told me it'll be here at midday uh, actually he says he was, he could not place the, you cannot place the order at nine o'clock I mean at 11 o'clock at night for the next day he says it's always the day after like unless it's done during business hours so I come in and the guy the the new supervisor the daytime supervisor says there's no part for you I said the guy told me and he said what do you want me to say I said so you saying that he what he told me I didn't want to say a lie you know but I said so so what you're saying is that the night supervisor what he told me was not true <laughs> and the guy says that's correct so basically he was he could not order this part at 11 p.m. yet he told me that this part will be here on midday he says go to the motel and so I called the uber went to the motel right to the hotel spent 65 bucks that's another what did I do oh it's in my it's in my bag and so it looks like they, yeah, so it probably was uh, rusted or frozen or something, but they couldn't take that line off, and I guess uh, they damaged it, but then when they showed it to me, they said it was uh, corroded inside. Well, I don't think they lied about this, but... Uh, so basically, they had to pull a line, at least I got lucky, they, you know, they have new trucks in here, and at least, you know, I think they did me a favor, instead of making me wait the second day, they just pulled the line of the sales truck existing truck and now when this and they still ordered the parts so now when this new part comes in they'll just put it back on right no one's the wiser so installed line zip tied up zip tied up put coolant in truck and let thermostat open to fill lines it opened then I refilled with coolant halfway on surge tank cleared codes no dings buzzers lights truck is complete that's it and that's the total harness da, 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 da. rate 142 an hour labor 1065 parts 1665 miscellaneous charges 101 I wanted to ask him about this hundred and one dollar and eighteen cents is listed under miscellaneous charges and I don't see it anywhere on uh, on the main sheet you know, just out of curiosity maybe it's wiring harness but wiring harness is hundred and twelve dollars and thirty seven cents this is 101.18 I think it's probably like a dinner for the for the mechanics that they had to order in on my behalf total charges 2831.68 Sales tax, 263.95. Please pay $3,095.63, which I did. Stay tuned. Look at these clouds. Jesus. So I'm at a pilot in uh, London, London, Ohio. Just uh, 10 minutes away from the auction, but it's too late today to load, so I'm here getting ready you see that Schneider in the front Schneider there's a team two guys and they were following me around the truck stop <laughs> I don't know why but then hold on what's happening yeah okay sorry about that uh, and then I was waiting for a guy to pull in this spot and it was like drive-through like you know happens rarely when both spaces are open right and on this side there's a RV if you can see in the mirror there's an RV over there yeah and so one guy a tanker was trying to drive in into that spot next to the RV and I, I guess he wanted to pull through and go where I'm going here but even though his trailer was uh, I just have to watch for these guys you know like it's the, the truck stop is getting busy I don't want anybody to hit me. I already went back and checked and my and the end of my trail is like three feet ahead of the yellow line, so it should be okay, but but so yeah that uh it was a tanker. You know, tankers are like forty-eight feet, fifty-one feet, they're shorter than dry vans or, or step deck. And that lazy guy couldn't do it. He tried to, you know, turn around that RV and he couldn't do it and I'm sitting there and that Schneider was sitting behind me 
and I thought they were losing patience because first they were waiting for me over there. Uh, I tried to back in another spot and that one just, there was a um, stone at the back, like a rock. I couldn't back far enough and my front was too close to the traffic, you know. So I left that one, I got here. And so this guy was trying, he tried to go in there, he couldn't do it, so he pulled out and right behind us there like three or four empty spots like at the very end there uh, there's three spots so why wouldn't you just bring it back in there and then pull through here but I, I don't know I guess the guy wasn't thinking you know but there was lots of space he should have you know if he would have gone in a wider arc he could have did, uh, did it but <laughs> I waited for him and I'm thinking okay he's probably gonna do this what I want to do like what I would do in his position just go bring the back of his trailer towards the grass and then just pull straight through but surprisingly that guy just left you know he left and he went around I don't know what he was doing and so I pulled like this then backed into that empty spots near the grass and I just calculated everything so that when I started turning my truck was pretty much straight in front of this space you know very smart even if I say so myself and then so basically, you know, I backed in front of the space and when I ended, my rear wheels were at the very end over there and I just pulled through. So now there's one spot behind me empty and this is the best position for me because, you know, I'm so long, right? Like I always say, my wheels are in the very back. You know, you see people are start cruising here. Nice colors. Like I love how this phone now shows the uh, colors. And what happened is I removed the protector that was getting dirty on the front. And, uh, and actually, I just remembered that I had that protector ever since I bought the phone. And it was not the proper one. It was just like, what you know, when you buy a new phone, uh, you have a plastic protector. And it's always very thick. And you cannot see very well through it, right? It's not a proper uh, thin film like you, you buy for like 20, 30 bucks. But I kept that one, and only now I removed it. Oh, I think that's the tanker driver. So he must have. Oh yeah, and actually, when when I when I pull through like this, I see a disappointed tanker driver come like this way. So he went instead of backing, doing that. What I did, he went all the way around, and then I guess he wanted to to back from this way. But this is crazy because this guy is parked here, so. You would have to back at uh, you know from the blind side, and you can probably see how all that grass is damaged over there. <laughs> I always look for uh, tips like that, you know. So that means that basically stay away from this area, you know. So probably people park next and they see the signs over there, right behind this flatbed. On the look on the ground, it says no parking. And which is, of course, not a good thing to do, you know, like park like that, because there's still lots of spots. The U.S. flag is beautiful today, you know, on the with the background of the sky, such such a dramatic picture, you know. Now, what's going to happen now is that I'm picking up uh, an excavator. I'm picking up. Uh, cat 328 so I'll have to use my boards I brought some uh, cheap boards they should work as outrigger boards and um, and then I'm doing 500 miles back to Canada and the good thing for me is that it's only uh, I want to show you guys I hate these containers over here but now here we have a cool truck for all you Peter Built fans, Sheets Trucking, Springport, Michigan. And actually, in real life, it does not look as good as on the phone. I don't know what's um, what's happening with my phone, <laughs> but the, the picture does look good on my end. And next to me is some kind of a dry van with electronic driver logs. See, they have a sticker. And on this end, I have uh, that's a freight liner. And on this end, I have a Freightliner bobtail, and I got a Peterbilt, and over there, 
Four Freightliners, oh, and I got one Kenworth Freightliner Freightliner. Uh oh, now we are in trouble. See that? <laughs> the guy is backing. Okay, I'll go by the check. Because usually these guys, they always back too far, and then they can hit you. You know. Now these trucks are becoming more and more popular. You know, at first I only saw like one or two of them, but now I see a lot of people are buying these new uh, Western Stars, and you know they do look cool. I'm loading. This is a fuel mart little truck stop here in uh, South Vienna, Ohio, just west of Columbus. I'll show my load in a second. So uh, I only have to go through uh, two states with permits, Ohio and and Michigan. So I'm here right now. That's I-70, right? I-70, and they want me to go all the way west on I-70 till I-75, till I reach I-75, and then I go north on 75, and then over here in uh, Lima. That's why I did it like this. I found little town Ada. So I have to take that highway here, 309. I guess there's a construction in here. Yeah, sorry for my sorry for my crooked finger. No, this is better. Yeah, and so I'm jumping on this 309 and then this, uh, what is this? Uh, 235 and go back to 75. And then uh, in Michigan, they want me to go on this 275 like this, and then 696 or whatever it is, and then 94 all the way to to Port Huron, and I cross the border here. That's Canada, 402, 402 to 402 to 401. Uh, my delivery is pretty much near Cambridge, Ontario, where I live. So that's the plan. It's not that far, well, probably like 500 miles, you know, <laughs> but that's a, a relatively short trip, because I don't like these, this, you know, big detour, I could have, but you know, what do you do, it's a, it's a big, big machine, I'm 11 feet, uh, 4 inches wide, and it's a compact radius, so it feels pretty heavy. Uh, they said uh, 72, then 75,000 pounds, and I have to find a place where to wash it. Uh, that's another problem I have to solve on the way to the border, because they might not like this. And I loaded it myself, but I couldn't film over there. And, and so, you see, sometimes people ask me how you tie down. Like, I, I, I show it in every video, right? Like, if you don't have anything on the frame, and there are two holes in there, but they're too far. There's like an awkward position. If I hooked my chains in there, I could have used my, uh, you know, uh, clamps. But that's like a weird angle. You don't want to do it like that. So, so I just grabbed the side of the track. And see, that's why it's good to have these D-rings. Sometimes they can be a pain in the butt if you load something flat, like a flat machine. But they come very handy with excavators, anything with tracks. And that's why as soon as I got this trailer, I installed two pairs in here. And actually, I persuaded the dealer to give me these. I said I wanted to give me four extra pairs of D-rings when I got the trailer. And then when I come home, they installed them, right? And actually, I don't use this one that that often because most, most of the time they sit like this. But, and you know, it's heavy machine, so you need more chains. Just four chains is not enough unless you're a local construction guy who doesn't care about DOT and I put another one like this over the track and into the D-ring and this is perfect because it sits on top of this wheel so it's not gonna push the track the truck is not gonna I mean the track is not gonna flex and same thing here so I got eight chains the same side of the track to the to the uh, D-ring oh and he, you see here I installed one here one here this also sometimes comes in handy. Sometimes I tie down the boom like this. And one chain 
on the boom and then this is very useful if you plan if you plan to buy a trailer make sure you have these uh, three last cross members uh, recessed it le lets the uh, you know put the boom really low and that's what I did and then just uh, I try to put it like this to spread the weight you know I don't like to put the entire weight on one cross member and plus then the, the, the board starts lifting you know so ideally I would put it in there but I, I need it to be uh, because it's so I know it's heavy so I need it to be uh, close to the rear you know and usually I know that's how I and you see that <laughs> these boards are too long so I'm using these new lighter boards and when I tie down over here, this thing lifted. But works very well, you know. So I drove it on myself, did like a, a few repositioning. What the heck? That's not good. That's how we can get a ticket. Hold on. Let me grab my uh, surgical instrument. Here we go. Beautiful. I mean, it's more like a something that a dentist would carry in his pocket for some uh, extreme complex cases. <laughs> oh, see, perfect. But yeah, either I have to clean this myself, but no, this will take forever. And this is it. Planes are flying around. Yeah, some small single-engine plane over there. It's probably not gonna show. And that's my beauty with my next adventure. I did not know how to connect the bucket. Never did it because the bucket came separately. So I asked the guy to hook it up and he showed me the secret button inside the cab that you have to flip basically once you hook it up and you tilt it like this and then you flip that switch but for some reason these are like two separate lots you know one lot is the machine and one lot was the the bucket and i never saw something like this before this is for also some kind of a special attachment you know But for now, it just this thing just camouflages itself as a, as an as an excavator. So 328 D LCR compact radius. See the counterweight sits inside the tracks. Very handy for tight spaces. I like this, except that the counterweight is much you know much taller, and they look decept they look deceptively uh, small. And then you start driving, all your gauges you know go in the red zone on the fifth wheel and stuff like that so that's why I had to use my uh, uh, lift axle and of course one thing I do is when I know there's gonna be lots of weight on the lift axle I move my fifth wheel I drop the trailer keeping the lock st still keeping the lock on the gooseneck but I dropped it till this part raised a little bit right and yeah I dropped the suspension and then I lifted the gooseneck a little bit and uh, opened the button on my dash, fifth wheel lock, and it was over here, right? And I just backed the truck closer to the trailer. So now I know this is perfect because now the center of the, you know, fifth wheel is right where my second axle is, kind of like, right? So because now I'm a four axle truck. And this is it. I'm using position three. Uh, it's already pretty low, so... And of course, you always have to measure. See, yeah, I'm in the third position. I measured the width, I measured the overall height, so I feel pretty confident I'm all good. All legal, got my flags, my signs. Have the paperwork. I'm good to go. I just need two things. I need uh, coffee, I need to wash my hands, because I just came out of the auction. And I need to find the uh, truck horse somewhere. Well, I'll be passing a whole bunch of 
whole bunch of truck stops. I look up in my truck stop directory which one which one has it. Okay, let me just check the all my chains because I just drove on an uneven road out of the auction. Everything looks good. While well, the break is over, I had a quick protein bar. Oh, look at these lazy people. Like I bet I lots of space, right? I'm about 120,000 pounds right now, and I managed to back this guy comes in well at least he didn't block me my exit he saw me Admiral merchants Admiral merchants I'm guessing he's from Canada I guarantee it because he has a three axle flatbed very few people in US buy uh, no Ohio the license plate is custom. The first word says tow, T O W, tow. <laughs> uh huh. Well, that's cool. Cool rooftop light. That's what I wanted to spec on the Kenworth. The guy couldn't find it. Anyway, I found a truck wash uh, through my uh, directory. I see how heavy I am. 60 over here on the pusher axle and 34 40 I'm mean like 45 on the drive but that's because the rear is up okay better get out there's other guy coming he'll park here as well I guarantee it because he has a two trailers yeah those guys are lazy as part of my French no wait he goes uh, he goes into the fuel line, so no need to swear, okay. That's my uh, rooftop light. The truck runs uh, good after the repair. Maybe this uh, def pump was, has been failing for a long time, you know? Well, 14. That's not good. Because the thing is, I gotta get out of uh, the Detroit area before the curfew. I, and it's either three, I think it's three. Yeah, so this is I-70 and some some guy was asking me which knob I'm always turning I don't know which knob but when I have a heavy load I have to do this otherwise the truck the truck is not gonna turn so I have to lift my axle which a bit is a pain in the ass 
Uh-oh. I lost my gear. And the auction is right on the other side of the freeway. So Captain Sergey has uh, about what? Probably 75, 77,000 pounds on the deck. So 51 kilometers, 30 miles to I-75, north of Dayton. So big detour. A uh, faster way would be to take 41. Actually it says 9 minutes slower. Huh. I thought there would be like a shortcut somewhere. So I-70, cloudy, but now the sun came out. But very cold, I don't know, it feels very cold. In the morning it was plus seven, which is, I don't know, 42 F, probably even less. And if I stay on this road, see, there'll be, first there'll be Dayton, and then Indianapolis. And it's windy, so I'm not gonna drive fast, 91 is a bit too low 92 why well, I like 92 because that's 57 miles per hour so kind of like easy to convert in uh, into American measures and so it's not too fast not too slow or good and in case somebody's new watching I don't make money Riding 2,000 miles in one day. Uh, I am paid percentage, and it's my truck, my trailer, so I pay for fuel repair. So the, the more fuel I spend, the, the more deductions there will be from my paycheck. So as long as I can meet my, you know, ETA for delivery. Oh, look at this guy, 4 axle truck, 4 axle trailer, cool, and he lifted uh, axle 3 on the trailer. Huh. It's funny how in Ohio I do see 4 axle trailers, even though according to my oversized load directory, you don't get much for the 4th axle on the trailer. Which means that it's still a good idea if I see people driving with these axles. Where was that? Uh, Peterbilt. Yeah, okay. Alright, we'll continue once I uh, hit uh, I-75. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention one thing. I started talking about this and got distracted yesterday. That Schneider truck I was talking about. It stopped behind me and the guy comes out and he says, Sergey, I watch all your videos. And it was a team and the guy from the passenger side came out, shook my hand. So his name is Robert. So Robert, thanks for watching. Sorry, I forgot to mention this before. Um, oh yeah, and so that uh, truck wash, I called the uh, phone number for the truck stop because the truck stop, my truck stop directory shows uh, uh, truck wash nearby and I called the guy I said do you have a truck stop he's I mean tr truck wash he says no but there, there's one at the same exit and it's exit 99 of I-75 and the town is called Anna reminds me of my late uh, favorite aunt in Russian it's uh, Anya Anna Anna she lived pretty long and died when she was like 91 or 92, you know, good genes. And anyway, so I, I, I found the truck stop on Google Maps, tried to call them, there was a number there, nobody's answering. So either they're closed or they're too busy to answer the phone. Like if it's a small truck wash, they probably, the same guys do the paperwork that wash your, wash your truck. and. I really need to get past Detroit before 3, but 
I cannot cross the border like this. But the last time I did this, you know, they put a bunch of guys on this and it takes them like 15, 20 minutes. If you put like two, three guys on one side, two, three guys on the other, and all I'm concerned about uh, is the tracks on the excavator. The rest is okay. Because that's what the uh, border border agents will look at if they see that baked uh, dirt between the tracks between those you know inside the track they will not let me cross yeah this is uh, Anna Ohio the truck wash uh, worked the kit now is uh, cleaner than it was new and I got another cup of coffee Diesel is uh, very cheap over here. 236, no, 228. Amazing. Said, too bad I am full. See, that's why I need big tanks. Because last time I fueled up, I think I paid like 265 a gallon US. See, I could have saved. Uh, 30 cents per gallon that's 30 bucks from a hundred and that's US which is now is like 50 Canadian okay well there it says uh, sign says welcome to Anna founded in uh, 1878 I think all right what do we have here up the, the trail a little bit it was too low in the front all right 75 north where are you I'm thinking it's 75,000, so probably that's uh, 34 metric tons. That's just the weight of the excavator. Six low, six high. shifting at 1600 rpm because it's so heavy and I need to pick up speed so that nobody rams into me in the back because I would hate for them to do that because then they will ruin my flags 8 high all right should be 92 no 92 perfect 57 miles per hour and the next stop is uh, 
like on that little detour 65 kilometers 40 miles away and time now is 20 past 1 and I'll have to double check my permit so that I'm not in violation near Detroit like I'm going in the bypass I'm not going through the actual city but I'll have to check where's that curfew begins what gotta be aware of that and this is what Ohio uh, countryside looks like uh, I'm traveling east on highway 309 309 uh, no idea why I suspect it's because there's a uh, construction on I-75 well, that's what my permit said uh, take 309 east and then 235 north and I-75 goes like this northeast and so I'm basically hooking up back to I-75 just doing extra I don't know 20 30 miles but sometimes I like traveling on a road like this you know at least you get to see the something because on a freeway there's often uh, not much to see you see farms and fields you see people working painting the, the mailboxes trimming the grass you see life so a bunch of eagles I was thinking of stopping and try to catch them but they move even as my truck was coming they started moving like you know the orbit like they go in a circle like this and then one flip of a wing and then and they shift their orbit to the truck you know I was uh, oh wow big hood uh, white hood Kenworth T800 uh, speaking about Kenworth the Kenworth sales guy uh, texted me today asking if I have any news I said I wrote uh, when parked never text one drive I was parked over there with coffee and I said I still want to buy the Kenworth that we specced but now Canadian dollar is very weak so hopefully you know I can lower the price a little bit and it'll be especially attractive to somebody from US okay 235 this is 235 south I guess yeah okay so one mile 1.6 kilometers and then 309 keeps going east and 235 jumps north but so yeah that's the news about the truck somebody was uh, asking in comments uh, i cannot afford the new truck unless i sell this one so now when i'm home i'm gonna change the description and i'm gonna add new DEF pump you know because for somebody that's also can be attractive because this is a very expensive repair and I already did it and somebody and somebody posted the link about uh, some mechanic talking about this actually thanks that was helpful and this redneck guy I think that's what he calls himself redneck mechanic or something like that uh, he was saying that the D, uh, DF pump failure is caused by ice and uh, freezing DF when you shut off your engine you know I'm not sure why they never tackle this problem you 
yeah, I can only turn so wide, you know? I cannot go in the field. And the guy had to move his uh, five-ton truck. And it's funny how you have a feeling, you know? I'm turning, I'm going very wide, and I have a gut feeling that if I don't stop, I'm gonna hit him. And sure enough, I look in the mirror, and the end of the trailer is right in his lane. Well, thank you, the nameless driver, for moving your uh, six-wheel vehicle. Just kidding. Nothing wrong with that vehicle. I used to drive it myself, uh, doing deliveries to gas stations. Probably was the, the worst driving job I ever had was uh, driving a delivery truck uh, bringing, you know, water, w windshield washer fluid, cigarettes, uh, food, stuff like that to gas stations. Because you had to unload everything manually, hand bombing as we call it. And the owners of gas stations were always very ungrateful. And we're basically bossing you around, never thank you, never free coffee, nothing. Just, okay, this goes in there. This goes in there. And I got so fed up with that attitude that basically I quit. Like, it's very hard to do your job when nobody uh, appreciates what you're doing, you know? And it was really hard physically and dangerous because we had these uh, tailgates. You know, like everything sits inside these uh, huge skids, heavy skids sit inside the truck and then you have a hydraulic tailgate or I think it was electric or hydraulic I don't know but there was a couple of buttons and so you have to position the use that little truck you know hand truck to move this 300 pound um, skid and you have to move it just so so that it doesn't fall off on the tailgate and of course the because it's so heavy the tailgate would start bending I think once it fell off it didn't fall off, it just, uh, it was some heavy cases of, uh, I think, windshield washer fluid, and uh, it was wrapped, but because it, the skid tilted, the plastic broke, and <laughs> all this stuff fell to the ground. So that was the worst job I had, so I appreciate what these guys are doing. Anyway, so 235 to I-75, that's what I'm doing now. Going through town of Ada, Ada, Ohio. Look it up, we're gonna put it on the map. And then tomorrow Google, Google search will publish Ada, like what's happening in Ada? Everybody's looking for Ada on Google Maps, so. Super, super flip. <laughs> what kind of trailer is that? <laughs> With a flip box. I just paid uh, paid the toll. Twenty two seventy five. Showed her my permit. This is a Port Huron, the U.S. side. Oh, look! There's a ship. Wow. But it's not a big one. Sometimes they have really big ships in here. Whereas, uh, oh, it just, it's a barge. Barge with a tow boat. You see over there? You know, those guys, when they push a barge like that, it's kind of like backing a truck, you know? You have to be really good. Uh, really good at maneuvering your boat well no big boats just that one oh I see a boat far far away it's probably sitting an anchor waiting for its turn and 
that's it. I'm in Canada. All I gotta do now is uh, clear my uh, load with the US Customs. I just did that. I stopped on the US side. Uh, had to go inside uh, the Customs building and they stamped my paperwork because it's a used machine. And it, it, it has that 72 hour rule we have to notify customs uh, three days before that you're coming but that was done a long time ago so everything was ready I just went there gave all the paperwork to the lady and she uh, did some notes on her computer and then stamped stamped my uh, uh, title or like certificate of origin from Caterpillar and said have a good have, have a good evening sir I said you too she was in a good mood probably end of shift <laughs> all right and that's Canadian customs the booth and that's the Canadian customs building I might need to go in there oh and of course what's interesting that some of my American viewers may not realize but now I have to declare I have to declare any repairs I did in US and you know I was driving and thinking well, like what they asking you how long in the States okay I crossed on Sunday and then they say how much did you buy how much did you spend and any any repairs you have to declare repairs if it's a non-emergency they might ask you to pay 13% sales tax uh, but in my case at least it was an emergency because otherwise the truck would just shut down but 3,000 US that what 42 4300 Canadian so imagine 13% from that uh, that's what like 500 bucks but I'm pretty sure I'm not paying that okay so I'm gonna stay in this lane because it's very wide perfect for oversized loads all right, so this is it. So I'm gonna uh, after I park somewhere here because it's already late. I'm gonna do the video and hopefully upload it today. Or oh, here's a French guy from Quebec. Oh, and he has a dropside rail too. Huh? Interesting. Anyway, okay. Talk to you later, guys.